Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Northwest Baseball Report. I am Josh, your host, and I'm excited. This is this has been a great weekend for baseball, for the site, everything going on. This is actually going to be the recap podcast for the March 19th through the 21st weekend. Lots of good games going on, some good series. But guys, before we jump into that one, kind of tell you what's going on with the website. First of all, we got another sponsor. I am super pumped for this one. I love having Northwest teams, Northwest businesses sponsoring what I'm doing because it means that what I'm doing is hitting home. It's hitting the region I wanted to hit. And the newest sponsor I have is Portland Baseball Club. They're a year-round baseball academy for players of all ages. They offer summer teams, fall ball, camps, private lessons. They actually have a, a facility in Tualatin, which is just uh, on the outside of Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's Once again, I'm just so thankful to have a sponsor like this, a program that is designed to you know, really develop young athletes to grow and to have a chance for the future and, you know, for them to want to sponsor me and kind of, you know, keep going what I'm doing, it means a lot to me. So, guys, if you're in the Portland area, you're looking for a baseball club or just a place to even practice and do lessons, that type of stuff, portlandbaseballclub.com. You can check it out, get some more information. Once again, that's portlandbaseballclub.com. Um, you know what? I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that – other businesses are looking at what I'm doing and saying, yeah, you know what? We're going we're to jump on this and, and be a part of it. And it just means a lot to me. Guys, also along with that, I have a, I've been super pumped. I actually got two new logos in for the website uh, this weekend. Had someone uh, design them, went through them. I like them both. I really do like them both. One is very similar in some aspects to the nine-inning know-it-all logo that I have. So that's the one I'm going to use primarily for t-shirts and stuff like that. But I'm going to use the other one too, because when you have two awesome logos, use them both. Why not? So pumped for that. I actually have two logos for Nighting and Know-It-All as well. So having a backup logo, an alternative logo, just it's just nice to have. It's fun to do and, and something that I enjoy. But guys, you're here listening because you want to hear the recap from the weekend. And once again, it was a lot of games going on. There was a little bit of weather disturbance here in the Northwest, but not too bad. I think for, for most part, teams might have had a little rain delays, but I think really everybody got their games in as far as I can tell. But let's start with the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, the GNAC, and right about Montana State Billings hosted St. Martin's in Montana, and they took advantage of having that home field advantage, and they won three out of four, and that actually was pretty big for Montana State. They've been on the road a lot playing some teams that are pretty skilled, pretty talented, haven't really come away, come away with a lot of wins, but here they got three wins in conference, big for them, get them, get the ball rolling, you know, so they're up and running. Another matchup in the GNAC was Central Washington versus Northwest Nazarene, and Northwest Nazarene has just been playing lights out this year. They've been, they've been doing great. I mean, it's just, there's no other way to describe it. So they came in, and they also won three out of four games against Central Washington. It's just, <laughs> they've been doing, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. They've been, they've been dominant in a lot of ways. They're 13-3 and three overall. Northwest Nazarene is 7-1 in conference. They have a pretty commanding lead right now in the conference. And I think the last I checked, they were ranked at one point. Uh, I'm not sure if they still are or anything like that, but a team that's definitely going to represent the Northwest and have a chance to, uh, make an impact down the line. So fun to see that going on. Once again, Northwest Nazarene is in first place in the GNAC uh, with a 7-1 conference record. Western Oregon at 2-2 two and two in the conference. Central Washington and Montana State both at 3-5 and five, and St. Martin's at 1-3 and three in the conference. So guys, let's jump into the next conference and that's the Northwest Conference. And this one, they had a full slate of games. They had, what, eight different teams playing. Each team had Double headers on Saturday and Sunday, so uh, pretty pretty busy weekend for them. First matchup was Paci was Puget Sound versus Pacific, and Pacific would take three out of four. They would just come in. They are they are having a strong start to the season. Uh, they're not in first place in the in the NWC, but they're right there in the hunt for first place. They're one game out of uh, first place. So they've been doing pretty well. Had some guys who come up big throughout the whole series. You know, throughout the whole season, different guys, different things. Right now, 
Uh, Ryan Kraut actually would have seven hits and six RBIs over the weekend uh, for Pacific. Whitman and Whitworth would face off this weekend, and Whitman would take three out of four, three out of four over the weekend, and that actually keeps them in first place in the NWC. It keeps them going. They've had a good start to the season as well, and you know, and they just they had a strong weekend. I mean, it's really all it is. Uh, they've had good pitching, good hitting. They've done what they need to do to stay in first place, and they're uh, six and two in conference, nine and seven overall. But really, conference play is what matters. Another matchup in the Northwest Conference was Pacific Lutheran versus Willamette, and this was this was been this would have been a series I would have loved to have watched because on the first day each team would get a victory by scoring at least fifteen runs, at least fifteen runs to win a game on Saturday. The next day though would be a lot tighter. You get a pair of four to three ball games, each team taking one of those. So they actually split the series uh, for the weekend and. It just sounded like a lot of fun. You had guys uh, getting, you know, hits all over the place, lots of runs, lots of RBIs. That's fun baseball, you know, but you also like to see the 4-3 games where it's tight, a little more intensity. So good weekend overall for both those teams. Splitting the doubleheader, I know both teams would have liked to have taken the series, but you take what you can get. Last matchup of the weekend for the Northwest Conference was Lewis and Clark versus Linfield, and Lewis and Clark just came out and had the sweep over Linfield. You know, for playing really later in the season, they actually didn't start as early as the rest of the teams in the Northwest Conference. They came on strong right off the bat. They are 5-3 and three overall, 5-3 and three in conference. All their games have been conference games. So for them to come, step right into conference matchups and start winning games and be in the thick of things, you know what? That's what they got to do, and, and they did pretty well so far. Uh, in fact, this weekend, their their pitching was pretty dominant. They had um, three of their starters go seven innings, six innings, and seven innings, only allowing two, two, and and no runs throughout the, the game. So their starters came up big. Uh, it's fun to see them kicking things off and really doing well. And once again, for the Northwest Conference, Whitman, 6-2, and two, leads the conference. Lewis and Clark and Pacific tied at 5-3. and three. Well, I'm at right there with them at 4-4. Four and four. Then you have... Uh, Pacific Lutheran also at four and four. George Fox, two and two. Puget Sound, two and four. Whitworth at one and three. And Linfield, one and five. So uh, quite a few teams still in the hunt. Still a lot of baseball to play. And we'll see how things play out uh, in that conference. Last conference here in the Northwest that's active at the moment, not counting the D1 stuff, is the Cascade Collegiate Conference. And first series of the weekend is LC State versus the College of Idaho and LC State would just put the metal, pedal to the metal, and they would not let up, scoring 52 runs in the four-game sweep this weekend. 52 runs. That's just unbelievable. In fact, they had 17 multi-hit games uh, by players in the weekend. Uh, Riley Way had three of those multi-hit games. But once again, when you have – you play a four-game set and you have 17 times – players get multi-hit games you're going to score a lot of runs you're going to get some wins and sure enough lc state has been pretty dominant this year they are 18 and 2 overall 11 and 1 in conference and they are giving themselves a pretty good lead in the conference play uh, moving on towards the end of the season the other matchup from this weekend eastern oregon versus oregon tech and this was another high scoring one for oregon tech they scored 49 runs on their way to, once again getting another sweep and so it just when when it rains it pours pretty much that type of idea um so oregon tech 49 runs almost matching lc state's 52 that's just a lot of stuff uh in fact mitchell swanson from oregon tech would lead the way he had nine hits scored eight runs and seven rbis that's a pretty nice little weekend so for the cascade collegiate conference right now once like once again LC State, 11-1, 18-2 overall. Oregon Tech is still in the in the running for first place, being 7-5. Corbin with their off week this week, so they're still 6-6. Six six. They dropped a third by the numbers officially. Uh, College of Idaho, 5-11 in the conference. And Eastern Oregon, once again, their first year back at, with baseball, is 3-9 in conference, 3-13 overall. But for them, you know what, this is a building year, and that's great to see them uh, getting out there and, and putting down a foundation for the future. But guys, once again, that's what we got so far for the Northwest. There were some Pac-12 games as well, a few other um, D1 games that went on. But 
I haven't covered a whole lot of those because honestly, they get coverage at the higher levels. Uh, they have D1 baseball sites that cover them. Baseball market covers them. ESPN even at times covers them. So, you know, those guys get coverage. I will cover them from time to time, but mainly it's going to be about these other conferences that don't get the, the view that I think they deserve because college baseball is college baseball. But guys, actually, we're, we're getting really close to the NWAC starting up. I think we're a week and a half from NWAC games being put onto the schedule and getting going. I'm pumped for that. Already have plans to make it out to at least one game in the first week or so uh, when the season starts. And I'm going to take a little bit of a road trip for a day and, and catch a game. And actually talking with a few other schools to see what their policy is going to be for this year. And hoping I can get out and cover uh, quite a few games this spring, get back into the the swing of things, taking photographs and writing articles and, and doing what I do. But guys, I'm just excited. We also got high school ball here in the Northwest starting uh, in like six days, six days till baseball at the high school level. So I'm excited for that. It's good up here in the Northwest. We got better weather. Spring is hitting and we get a little bit of rain showers. But other than that, it's been pretty nice. So guys, thank you so much for listening to this weekend's recap. Tune in next week as I once again recap it again. And I actually have some special guests coming on the next couple of weeks to talk some Northwest baseball. So pay attention for that. Check it out. Hey guys, thanks for doing this, and I will talk to you later.